Today, a spotlight on Brisbane suburb Corinda. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to his post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, I've been quite busy over the last few days talking to a number of our followers on a one-on-one -on -one basis regarding specific suburbs and discussing the trajectory of properties in these areas. Today, I'm going to share some of the analysis that I did for one particular postcode and it's quite a useful touchstone insofar that there's a lot of interest in a number of suburbs in and around Brisbane at the moment. And this is quite a good pointer to some of the things that are going on. Now, before I start, I just need to make the point that this information is in no way financial advice. It's just based on my own analysis and data from all sorts of sources, including my core market model. But nevertheless, it is a quite a good stake in the ground. It will change, of course, and it is therefore somewhat time limited. And just by way of background, our core market model pulls information from our household surveys and from many other sources, including data from the various state valuer sources and a number of others too. And it all goes into our core market model and then that supports the analysis that we do for our blog for the YouTube channel and also for individual client work. And we can take the mortgage stress data, the home price trajectory data, the buying and selling intentions data from our surveys, the migration statistics and the economic data, including CPI, wages and unemployment, and put all that into the core market model and run some different scenarios on different potential outcomes. And that allows us to make some suggestions as to what may happen with regards to prices at a region, state and all Australia level and of course at a postcode level. But these are of course just indicators and they do change as the data moves around. So let's introduce the postcode. Corinda 4075 is a suburb of the city of Brisbane and in the 2016 census there was a population of just over 5,000 people. It's about 8.8 kilometres southwest of the centre of Brisbane's central business district. And in fact, the suburb takes its name from the Corinda railway station, which in turn was likely named after a local cattle station owner, Sir Arthur Palmer, which he named after his Corinda pastoral station. And Corinda was first settled in the 1960s as a small farming community, and it's bloomed since then. I'd also mention that Corinda State High School is one of Brisbane's leading co-educational public schools and is in the suburb and this does attract people to the area. So here is just a high level map which shows the particular suburb we're talking about and it's southwest of the centre of Brisbane and you will notice the Brisbane River we'll need to come back to that in fact the Brisbane River goes down one side of the postcode and the Oxley Creek goes down the other side of the postcode. That might give you a clue to one of the things to think about when buying in the area. Here is a more detailed map which again shows the river and the creek and also the main road south called Oxley Road and you can see that the suburb occupies a space between the river and the creek either side of the main road. There is, of course, a station there too, and we'll come on to that a bit later, because it's quite easy to get access into Brisbane from the centre of the town. Here is the first of a series of shots showing some of the features of the area. Typical outer suburban Brisbane suburb, a mix of older properties and new properties. In fact, there's a lot of development going on in the area at the moment. I'll come on to that just shortly. There's also access to a number of reserves and quite a few green spaces around the place and that includes views out over the Brisbane River. So it is quite attractive in many respects. I mentioned the railway station. There is a direct line into Brisbane and it's relatively modern and smart. 
and the services are pretty frequent. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as you walk around is there's been more new development recently, including some more high-rise development as we see here on one of the main roads. Elsewhere, it's a typical commercial centre. But as you walk around, you begin to see more examples of low-rise development. And in fact, the development plan for the area has plenty of space for the development of low-rise buildings, the removal of single houses, and the replacement with multiple houses, townhouses, villas, and low-rise apartments. Not high-rise, though. But I think you can conclude that this area is changing quite fast. And there are also areas which will probably turn into land releases. And there are a number of land parcels for sale in and around the area at the moment. So again, this is another sign of continued construction and many more properties coming on stream. Now, I did mention the rivers earlier on, and it is just worth looking at the flood information data coming out of Brisbane City Council. This is a map which is the more extreme end. You can select various options, but it shows that areas around the suburb are definitely at some risk of flooding in some unusual circumstances. And in fact, even more generally, there is some risk of flooding. And there is a warning which goes like this. As the suburb is bounded by the Brisbane River and the Oxley Creek, parts of the suburb are susceptible in extreme circumstances to flooding. And parts of the suburbs are also susceptible to landslip, as demonstrated in the 1974 Corinda landslip. So it is worth doing your homework if you're looking at buying a property in this particular area, especially on the lower lying ground close to the river. So I'm going to look at houses and land. There were only eight properties for sale in that category when I looked. And that research was done in early February. And here's a map which just shows the distribution of it. A couple on the main road, a couple in more suburban streets, and a couple close to the creek. And here is some information. There's a townhouse there going for auction. There was an auction on the 17th. Again, a house, five bedrooms. There's land. And you can see there $540,000 asked for a parcel of land in the area. Price information in another house, 950000 plus. There's land offers over $1.99 million. That'll be multiple developments, of course. And house prices are really hard to find at the moment in the area. I did speak to an agent who says that it is quite difficult to pin down current values. They're moving quite quickly. But also people are being a bit coy about what prices are being achieved and again you can see more land there so subdivision reconstruction of existing properties and particularly if there's a large plot that you can convert into additional property is highly attractive and that's putting a bit of a flaw on home prices at the moment there's also quite a lot of information about land two million dollars here for a parcel along the oxley road that's the main road through of course and even here, you can see there more residential land, and it shows the relationship between the train station, the town centre, and Brisbane city centre as well. Now, according to my records, there were 11 properties sold in the last eight weeks in the postcode. And again, here's the map showing the layout. Most of them were not on the main road. Most of them were in some of the side streets. And we'll just look quickly at some of the examples. Last asking price, 700000 for a house. I should remind you again, of course, that last asking price is not an indicator of what the settlement price was. There can often be quite a gap, as we'll see later. Another house by negotiation, the last asking price, $1.5 million with a larger property on a larger block. $700,000 for another house. 325000 for a townhouse. And this is what you see quite often, a subdivision with multiple smaller properties being built at the moment. There's a lot of that going on. Another example of a townhouse, last asking price between 451000 and 496000 Same old story, very vague. 
and last asking price for a house in Donaldson Street, $800,000. That's an older style property. And a few more. A townhouse, $560,000. Another house, $900,000. $680,000. And $600,000. So that's a, quite a range. And once again, it's worth highlighting that quite often, of course, the property is being sold for its land value rather than what's on the block currently. Now, in terms of price trends, this is the current price information. So if you look at 2013, the median price was 540000 for a house, rose by 3.7% in 2014 to 560000 It rose in 2015 by 23.2% up to 690000 a small rise of 5.8% in 2016 to 730,000. It fell in 2017 down 1.4% 1 to 720,000. A small rise in 2018 of 0.7% to 725,000. A slightly bigger rise in 2019 at 4.8% to 760,000. And a bigger rise again of 13.2% last year up to 860,000 and that reflects the quite strong demand for property in the area but it also reflects this phenomenon of people buying up land with property on it for redevelopment and that is definitely driving prices higher. Nevertheless over this period the average gain is 6.6% .6 per annum or 4.8% after inflation. So if you go on that old adage that prices double every seven years, well, this is again disproved by what's going on in this postcode. But nevertheless, this gentle acceleration of price is quite typical for inner Brisbane suburbs. For houses, you can't say the same for units. Now, standing back, we can just look at the overall postcode. There are 195 listings at the moment, with 37 added in the past month. We expect to see more coming on over the next couple of months. In May last year, listings were higher at 280, and 60% of houses, the rest are units. But there are many subdivisions and rebuilds in play, as I've discussed. The gross yields for investment property for houses is around 4%. That fell from 4.2% last year. And the net yield, that's after the mortgage and other maintenance costs, etc., is around 2.75% and is falling. We know that some property investors are underwater because of the economics of their properties. The rents for houses are rising up 3% over the past quarter. That, of course, is a lot slower than prices for purchase. And the typical rent is around $520 a week at the moment for houses. The vacancy rate's around 1% compared with 2.5% last year. And there are around 30 vacancies currently reported compared with 45 back in 2019. With regard to asking prices, now with regard to asking prices, it's been pretty flat of late. A typical house price of around $680,000. The average settlement is often just a little bit below asking, although some have moved above and those are the ones where the building potential is strongest. And the intention to sell is rising slightly according to our surveys. And then if I turn to my stress data, this is up till the end of January, there are 9,200 households in the area, 3,900 borrowing, 3,700 renting, around 2,800 properties for rent, and around 2,500 property investors. Overall financial stress is just 28%. That's quite low from a cash flow perspective relative to other areas of Brisbane and also relative to other states. And within that, the mortgage stress is pretty low at 15%. Only 580 households in cash flow difficulty at the moment. A few of those are still on principal and interest repayment holidays. That will come to an end at the end of March. Around 2% risk of default over the next 12 months. Turning to renters, there are around 38% of those renting in rental stress. So again, not too bad, but a little higher than some other postcodes in the area. And with regard to property investors, around 27% of property investors are in difficulty. 71% are in severe stress from an investment perspective, meaning that they're struggling to sell, they're struggling to let the property or they are deeply underwater in terms of cash flow. 
and there are around 619 stressed investors. And in fact, ahead, we think that some of these investors will decide to sell into the rising market. We also think that there will be a few mortgage holders who will be forced to sell over the next few months. And we also know that there are a number of down traders, so people who bought many years ago, who are thinking of selling to release equity into the rising market. So net, net, we expect to see stronger listings in the next two to three months. Finally, we'll talk about price scenarios. So this is our standard scenario analysis. The best case scenario, assuming that the virus gets under control, the vaccines get rolled out quickly and the borders reopen, is we could see a rise of around 9% this year, 3% the following year, and maybe a slight adjustment in 2023. If, on the other hand, the virus rattles around longer and the borders stay shut for longer, the rise is going to be significantly smaller. And if we get a significant second wave, as, for example, we see in Europe or in the US, then prices could well fall with a net fall over three years of 6%. Nevertheless, at the moment, the best case scenario has the highest probability of working out. And so that's the one that we use for our analysis of trajectory in the place. And so, as I mentioned earlier on, the average price at the moment is around 860000 That was up 3.2% in 2020. We're estimating a rise of 9.1% in 2021, up to $938,000. A small rise of 3.4% in 2022, of 970000 And a very slight settling back to 960000 in 2023. But you can see that the extension of that trend over the last few years is expected. And that means that anybody who bought over the last few years will be sitting on a certain amount of equity, which is one of the reasons why we expect prices to continue to be firm. But also I need to underscore again the very significant changes that are going on in the postcode with regard to the development of more low-rise multi-occupancy buildings, subdivisions and townhouses, and just a general concentration of smaller plots and more building. This is a trend we're seeing in many parts of Brisbane, and we certainly see it here. And as a result of that, people who bought into the area some time back thinking it was going to be a nice, quiet suburb might start to get a bit concerned with all of the development in train. The other point again to mention is that you need to be careful in some areas because of the flood risk. It doesn't touch the whole of the postcode, but nevertheless, some areas in lower-lying areas close to the rivers, it's worth checking. And so in summary, this is a good example of an inner suburban area around Brisbane. There are many others doing somewhat similar things. What I would say is that the mortgage stress in this postcode is somewhat lower than many others, simply because people have been living here longer. Nevertheless, we do expect to see prices continuing to be relatively firm and certainly compared with some of the unit prices in and around Brisbane. Houses look a much better bet both for own occupation and even for property investment, which is why interstate buyers are actually quite active at the moment. And if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me for a particular suburb, just go to the DFA blog and send me a message. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.